I'm Rachel, and I am here with the Prince William Public Library System to teach you how to make your own awesome piece of pottery right at home. First, we're gonna go over the materials you're gonna need, some of which is already in your kit, and some of which you'll have at home. Then I'll walk you through the steps of the project. And finally, we're gonna to need to bake your clay in the oven at 275 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. So make sure you get an adult to help you with that. So you should have in your kit some Sculpey clay. And you will also need any bowl or form you would like to use to make your item. If you don't wanna use a plastic or ceramic bowl, you could use a planter, you could use a mason jar, you can use the outside of a candle. It doesn't matter as long as you can use it. You may also want a fork or a toothpick in case you wanna scratch lines later into your pieces to make sure they have a solid connection. Now I'm gonna use this really cool tool. It's a pottery tool, but you probably don't have this at home. So you can use a fork or a toothpick or anything that's safe and you won't poke yourself with. I also have here a butter knife to safely cut the clay, but you don't need a butter knife to cut it if you don't want to. You can just break it off with your hands. You're also gonna need something to line the inside of your bowl with. This could be anything from a paper towel to tin foil to printer paper to wrapping paper. It does not matter, but it's gonna keep your clay from sticking to the inside of your form. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna clear off a nice workspace. A wooden tabletop is gonna work best or your kitchen counter, but please ask any adults if they would like you to put down newspaper first to keep it clean. You wanna wipe the area down, maybe with some sanitizer, to get rid of any dust, dirt, crumbs, or pet hair. Next, you're gonna prepare your clay form. So I'm using a ceramic cereal bowl, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear off just enough tin foil, and I'm gonna press that tin foil just along the inside of the bowl. All right, so I've pressed the tin foil on the inside of the bowl. This does not have to be neat and clean. This is just gonna keep it from sticking. But if you notice, you want your liner to hang over the rim of your form so that later on we can lift this up and pop our bowl out of the bowl form. So in your kit, you may have gotten white clay, you may have gotten different colors of clay. So pick out the first color you would like to use. When I work with clay, I like to open only what I am currently using. So I don't wanna open up and peel back the plastic of all my clay at the same time because you wanna keep it away from the air. You wanna keep it nice and fresh and soft so that you can use it with ease. I've already opened some of my clay over here just to test it out. And as you can see, this particular clay comes in little bars. So you can, if allowed by an adult, cut it with a butter knife. This actually breaks like a wafer, so it's really convenient. And with this clay, you wanna warm it up in your hands a little bit first. So just squish it around. You don't wanna overwork it, but just turn it into a nice ball of clay. To start off, I suggest breaking off and preparing a ball of clay that's about this size. It could be a little bigger, it could be a little smaller, but it's about an inch in diameter, okay? And then once it's nice and soft and squishy, we are going to roll it out into what is known as a clay coil. A clay coil is just a long rope of clay. It kind of looks like an earthworm. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this down on the table, okay? And when I set it down on the table, I'm going to start rolling it back and forth with my hands. And as I do that, I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to set my clay down onto the table and then with just a little bit of pressure, I'm gonna roll that clay back and forth. 
and you can see it's already getting nice and smooth here, okay? So roll it back and forth and apply just enough pressure. Roll from the tips of your fingers about to the middle of your palm, okay? So roll here to here, back and forth. And then once it gets about two inches long, you're gonna start rolling from end to end. So start here, pressure, and then roll all the way this way. If it starts getting a little flat at some points and it gets hard to roll, stand it up so the flat side is up and then gently press down so it's round again. You can make your coils by pressing down from side to side if that is what you would like to do. So if you don't like rolling them, this is a perfectly fine way to make your coils. I like to roll them so they're pretty round. And you'll notice it's getting pretty long now, right? So I like to roll my coil until it's about as thick as a pencil or a pen. Not too thick, not too thin. And you can see that as I'm working it, I'm starting to move it and work different sections of the clay. But that's pretty good now. I would say that's about a foot long. Leave this on the table when you do it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a coiled circle. So I'm gonna start at one end. I'm just gonna turn this inward and press it firmly, but not too hard, and then start coiling it. And each time you go around the circle, just keep pressing. Kind of looks like a cinnamon roll, right? So this is going to be the bottom of your pot. Decide which side you want to be seen from the inside and the outside. So what that means is when you look down into your bowl, if you want to see this side, put it upright. If you want to see this side, put this side upright. And then we're gonna take our bowl and we're gonna place our first coil shape into the bottom center, okay? So just put that in there and give it a little press to kind of flatten it out against whatever liner you put in there. So that's what the start of your project looks like. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to roll out more coils and make more shapes while I tell you some fun pottery facts. So there's no need to rush. Take your time. Don't forget you can pause this if you feel like you need more time. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make shapes to go around this layer. And then we're gonna do a second layer and maybe even a third layer you can make your coil shapes as big or as small as you want to. It is totally up to you. And you do not have to make circles. If you would like to make squares or triangles or hearts, you can do that too. Let's make some more shapes. So some fun things that you may or may not know about pottery is the oldest piece of pottery found by archaeologists is dated to be about 20,000 years old. It was found in a cave in southern China and 20,000 years ago in certain parts of the world there were still woolly mammoths. So pottery once fired is incredibly durable and that's why people have used it for so long. Clay starts out very soft easy to work with, and then it goes through a heat process called firing. Now, while we're gonna fire in your oven today, there are clays that when you fire them, they go through a firing that's two to 3,000 degrees. So they're very durable. And if you think about it, one day the bowl that you're making here could be in a museum. So, Art is very timeless, 
But pottery was also made not just as an art, but as a functional wear. So people did not begin making pottery just for fun. It was used for food, it was used for cooking, it was used for water vessels. And sometimes in ancient Egypt, it was used during the funeral process. One of the things about pottery being so durable and such a timeless art and craft is that it is known as the art of patience. And that means everything you do in pottery takes a lot of patience and a lot of time and sometimes a little frustration. This is probably the easiest way to get into clay art, but there are some forms of traditional Japanese pottery where instead of baking your item in the oven, you fire it in a kiln and the entire process can take up to a week long. And not only does it take a long time, but the temperatures it goes to are very, very hot. So even though we're only firing this to 275 degrees, a lot of pottery needs to be fired at above 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. 2000 degrees Fahrenheit means that it's hotter than magma. So it's hotter than some of the stuff that's coming out of a volcano. So we're rolling out more shapes now. And I've mostly done circles for the first layer. If you notice that you're gonna have a lot of clay oat left over, you can either save it and do two or even three bowls or you can carefully move, lift up your tin foil or liner and put it into a bigger bowl at home. And then I'm gonna show you how we start connecting these coil shapes into the next level of our bowl. And if you don't wanna keep making coils, you don't have to keep making coils. I'm gonna show you a pretty cool technique to fill in some spaces. But for the first coil level, we're gonna start attaching them. Now that you have a couple shapes, you're gonna take one of these and if your clay is still soft and a little sticky, all you need to do is line these up together, okay? And press them together. And when you press them, what you wanna do is you wanna kind of bridge the gap between this piece and this piece. So gently push your finger in like this. Just mold them together really softly. If you would like, you can actually mold all of these lines away if you want the inside to be smooth, but the outside to have texture. But I like the whole piece to have texture. So now we're gonna bring this one over here, our second piece. I'm gonna gently press it down in so it conforms to the shape of the bowl. And just like the other one, we're gonna make sure it's touching both pieces now. And I'm gonna take my finger from one side of this coil to the other side right here. And I'm just gonna gently blend those together. You don't wanna smash down your clay. You don't wanna be overly aggressive, just nice and gentle. Now you'll notice these pieces are touching right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing right here, okay? If your coils come apart a little bit, just press them back together. That's totally fine. Now you might be wondering, there's a little gap right here, right? Well, you can actually either leave that there if you want it to just be decorative, or you could take a little ball of clay, like this, about that big, soften it up in your hands, and then you can fill that in. Now, I recommend that you blend that in together, but you don't have to. If you really like the look of a lot of texture, you can leave it like a little pebble fell in there, okay? Be creative. This is your bowl, and it's gonna be unique to you. I kind of like that. I kind of like that it's filled in there, but then there's three separate circles. So we're gonna put in another one, all right? I'm gonna put it in right over here. And again, I want this to touch both of these sides. 
So press it down, press it in. And then where these two are touching and these two are touching, just from one coil to the next where this little crack is, we're just gonna take our finger and we're gonna smooth that in. And just like before, you can leave this space if you like the look of having that space there. Or you can take a little ball of clay, smush it in to fill in that gap and make it a little more stable. And then blend that all in. If you have some different colors of clay, it would look really cool if you filled in that gap with a different color of clay. So keep filling in your second row of shapes, okay? Now, however high your bowl is, is how high you can go with your piece. So we're gonna do a third row here, and then we'll see where we're at. So while we fill in our second row, and even go to the third row, pottery is not just, you know, an ancient historical art. There are plenty of modern potters, and actually, in the past five to 10 years, pottery has really come back, because artists, and crafters can now sell their stuff on the internet. So what is really, really cool is there are some collectors who will pay hundreds of dollars from their favorite pottery artists for a coffee mug. And that might sound like a lot of money, but these are very special pieces to people and the artists took a lot of time on them. Pottery used to be very, very functional. And recently, a lot of potters are using bowls and cups and plates as a canvas, not just an eating or drinking vessel. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do just with a little bit of clay. It could be as simple or as elaborate as you want it. If you're starting to get some ideas for your piece and you're thinking, oh, I wonder if I can do that, the answer is probably yes. If you would like to sculpt and put little animals in your bowl, you can do that. If you want to add little beads around the rim of your bowl, you can do that. If you get to your second level and you think, well, I wonder if I could just take this and I could just wrap it around the top and go from circles to a line, you can do that. It looks really neat if you start switching up the shapes and textures of your coil pot. So I'm gonna put that one in there. I'm gonna roll out another one. And we can learn a lot about history and modern times by looking at pottery. So while a lot of people might think of pottery as like an ancient art form, the people descended from those potters are still alive and they've taken those styles and those traditions, and they've brought a modern spin on it while keeping some of the older traditions in pottery. There are even potters now that 3D print their items. And if you're wondering, well, how do you 3D print clay? What they do is they turn this clay, they mix it with water, and they blend it up really, really well until it's a nice slippery mud about the consistency of toothpaste. And you can put that in certain 3D printers. It looks really neat. Some potters prefer the historical methods. They prefer digging a pit in the ground and covering their pots up with earth and firing it that way. That is one of the oldest methods, a pit firing. Other people prefer 3D printing their pottery. If anybody ever tells you that you're not doing pottery correctly, stop and ask why they're saying that. Is it true? Is there something you should be doing differently? Or is it your style? As long as you are following the directions to fire the clay correctly, you can do whatever you would like to do with your pottery. If you would like to really personalize your pottery, you can roll out very thin coils and write your name with them. Just form shapes or letters or numbers, or maybe something cool that you like from pop culture. Shape it, stick it on your bowl. Maybe a possum. Now with my bowl, you can see 
I have a space right here, all right? I didn't really fill that in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch up the texture a little bit. And I'm actually going to take this and put a coil in there, start it all the way down there. I'm gonna work it upwards. I'm gonna change what I'm doing. I didn't plan to do this, but that's kind of the fun, right? So you see I'm pressing it into these little gaps. It turns out this clay is two colors. I think your clay is two colors too. That's fun. There's no mistakes in art. So you see, I've got coils and now I've got a little loop. And I'm gonna open up a little bit more. And I might add some more fun stuff to this. Part of the art of pottery is knowing when you feel happy with your piece and you want to stop working on it and put it in the oven to get fired. For instance, I thought I would like to do three layers on this, but I kind of like the way it looks right now. And that will leave me with clay for a second project. It would be fun if you did have any leftover clay to do it with a friend or if you have a family member or guardian at home. So this is what my bowl currently looks like. I really like it because it looks like a batch of cinnamon rolls that's shaped like a flower. I think that's really neat. But what I might do is I'm going to roll up some little marbles of clay like this, just roll it between my hands. And now to stick on these smaller pieces, you're gonna take your fork or toothpick and you're gonna just draw little lines, just like that, not too deep. And then where you are going to put this on the bowl, let's say I put it right here. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna scratch little lines there too. We're gonna to make clay Velcro. And you only have to do this for the smaller pieces, okay? So you're gonna take it and you're just gonna line those hash marks up, wiggle it around a little bit, just back and forth, and then press it down. So let me show you that one more time. And this is just to make sure that the smaller pieces stick to each other, okay? So I'm gonna make another clay marble. Gonna roll it between my palms to get it nice and warm and a little bit sticky. And then I'm gonna take my, this is called a needle tool, but your fork or your toothpick or your pencil, like a sharp pencil, you can see I'm drawing little hash marks. They're not too deep. And then I'm going to attach that right here. So I'm gonna draw some more hash marks. Okay, just big enough. And then hash mark side to hash mark, okay? You're gonna line those up like it's Velcro. Give it a little wiggle and then press down. And that helps attach it permanently. And we're gonna do that all around. When you feel like you are getting to the end of your project, let an adult know. And then Preheat your oven to 275 degrees. You are going to get a baking dish or a cookie sheet or a plate or something that can go in the oven. And then we're gonna remove your piece of art, put it onto that dish, and we're gonna stick it in the oven for 15 minutes. We need to take our project out of the bowl form and we need to set it into an oven safe baking dish. If your clay is very, very soft and squishy and you're worried that it's gonna flop or wiggle, you can put your bowl with the clay into it into the refrigerator for five or 10 minutes. Not too long though, because you don't want it to get chilly and fall apart, but just a little bit to firm the clay up. And then I have a cake pan here because it's about the right size and it's gonna be easier to clean than a baking dish. What I'm gonna do very carefully, you may wanna get an adult to help with this. 
you're gonna take the sides right here and peel them up. And then you're gonna use this to lift this out of there, okay? So you're gonna lift it up. Lift it up with two hands. And now slide it into your hand like this, okay? We're gonna peel this tin foil off. And now we can check if our project needs any assistance before we put it in the oven. Technically, you can leave the tin foil on if you're nervous that your project is gonna fall apart or get flat. The only thing you will not be able to do if you leave the tin foil on is see if you need to repair or smooth anything. But that is your call to make. So I'm starting to peel it. I'm gonna support it with my other hand too. I'm gonna set it into the cake pan. And now I'm gonna bend the edges of mine up a little bit. Okay? So if your project is still too soft and when it came out of the bowl, it was no longer quite bowl shaped, we're gonna use a coil hand building technique where we're just gonna take our thumb and forefinger and very carefully press and bend this upright. If any of it comes apart, that's okay too. Just squish it back together. It is very, very common when you make clay items that part of it falls apart while you're handling it. There's no need for panic and there's no need to feel like you did anything wrong. It happens to me and I've been doing this a long time. Clay is very soft until you fire it. So that's what it naturally wants to do. So just work it. If you still feel it's way too soft, put it in the fridge a little bit again. I'm gonna kind of press down here because it's a little warm here where I'm recording this. So I'm just gonna press in. I kind of like that. So if I had another layer, it would be easier to fold this in. But I decided to keep it two layers because I think I would like to use this as a jewelry dish. Okay, so you have your new Pottery Buddy all ready to go. When the oven beeps and it says that it's 275 degrees, you're gonna put this in the oven and you are gonna set a timer or have an adult set a timer for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, you're gonna look in, just make sure everything's okay. And then you're gonna turn the oven off and let it sit for another five minutes. You're gonna open the oven door and have an adult, my oven's ready, and have an adult with pot holders. Do not grab this yourself. I don't want you to burn yourself. Your adult, guardian, anybody over the age of 18 is gonna grab this with pot holders, take it out, you're gonna let it sit there. And then once it has cooled off totally, you have your new work of art. Once your bowl is cooled off and out of the oven, it is not food and drink safe, but feel free to use it for jewelry or toys or knickknacks or keys or just for display. Thank you for joining me and have a great day.